It takes not only guts to enter the Mexican drug game, but also fierce determination. Eric Valencia Salazar was able to climb up the ranks with little to no criminal background and become a leading member of not just one cartel, but two. Winning multiple wars, the blood on his hands tells a story like no other. Eric Valencia Salazar, more infamously known by the alias L85, has a mysterious past that not many know about. Even his birth date is yet to be confirmed, and the DEA could only narrow it down to two possibilities, March 11, 1977 or November 19, 1982. That means that his age could be 40 or 46, no one having been able to verify it. Before joining the underground drug game, Salazar had no criminal record. It seemed as though he dived headfirst into the major league, establishing himself as a top Mexican drug lord. However, that time away from crime didn't make him any less of a threat to the police. He has been described by Mexican military personnel as highly violent, making him a force to be reckoned with. In March 2007, Salazar came onto the radar of Mexico's Office of the General Prosecutor when an open investigation began that tied him to the notorious Zen the Yegon, a Chinese-Mexican businessman and drug operator from the Sinaloa cartel. Through this investigation, authorities were able to conduct a raid on his home in Mexico City, where they seized 205 million US dollars in cash. 205 million stashed in one basement. What about the other basements that haven't been discovered? Just imagine how many rooms like this one has to be in Mexico. It's estimated that Mexican cartels make around 40 plus billion dollars from the US market and an unknown amount from the international market each year. The forecast is that Mexico will make 4.6 trillion pesos, $231 billion in 2023 from taxes. So cartels maybe make one third of that amount. So imagine the corruption levels in Mexico. Crazy, isn't it? Zenli Yagon didn't talk himself or anyone else in, but all fingers pointed at L85 as his leading man in Mexico City. Most probably, it was L85 who gave all this cash to Yagon for the chemicals that were used to produce methamphetamine. Yagon was the supplier because he owned a pharmaceutical company and did import those chemicals from China which L85 used to produce methamphetamine for the United States market. He got so dangerous that Mexico City placed a whopping $5 million bounty on him, an amount which L85 is rumored to have said was very insulting to his person. The investigation went on for some time, and as more layers were unraveled, it seemed as though Salazar's relation to the drug game was deeper than the authorities had initially thought. It wasn't long before Salazar was being connected to the Millennio Cartel, which was a criminal organization run by Oscar Orlando Nava Valencia, a former lieutenant of Ignacio Nacho Colonel Villarreal, who was a then leader of the Sinaloa cartel faction. It was even said that Salazar was possibly the reason behind a murder in Urupan, Michoacan, of a man known as Marin Zambert. It seemed clear that not only was Eric Valencia Salazar a dangerous individual, but he was on the way to becoming a key player in the Mexican drug scene. The arrests of a few of his superiors at the Millennial Cartel pushed Salazar further up the criminal hierarchy. As more of the leading members faced jail time, Salazar stepped up to the plate to take on their roles and responsibilities in their absence. It wasn't until Colonel Villarreal's death did Salazar really get a sense of power. The Millennial Cartel was facing severe internal conflict, with the organization unsure of how to proceed now that one of its leaders was gone. Salazar and his partners Martin Orzola Ortega and Nemesio Aseguera Cervantes wanted control over the organization. But they weren't the only ones. On the opposing side were El Pilo and El Papirin. This caused the Millennial Cartel to be split into two major sides, ultimately leading to a deadly internal war between members of the same cartel with differing loyalties. Salazar's side went by the name of Los Torcidos, while his enemies went by La Resistienza. To gain the upper hand, Salazar and his group started a propaganda campaign against La Resistienza to demonize the extortions they committed against law enforcement, business people, and other government authorities. In retaliation, La Resistienza joined forces with Los Zetas and established a home base in Zacatecas. Salazar's home base was in Jalisco. Eventually, Los Torcidos won the war and was able to dominate the drug operations in western Mexico, eventually rebranding to the Jalisco New Generation Cartel CJNG. In 2012, word went around that Salazar was now a leading member of the CJNG and was responsible for fighting off the joint forces of enemy groups Los Zetas and La Resistienza. Along with this, he was also allegedly coordinating a drug trafficking corridor that ran along the Pacific Ocean through a port in Mazanillo, Colima. Through this corridor, he oversaw the transport of substances like cocaine and ephedrine. Shipments came in from Colombia and China under his supervision and went through the port undetected. With this help, the Jalisco New Generation Cartel was able to expand its market share into the Mexican states of Michoacan, Morelos, Veracruz, and Guerrero. Salazar was ruthless in his operations, stopping at nothing to achieve his goals. A real high-class professional criminal, and Boca del Rio, 
There was a mass murder of 35 people by the Jalisco cartel, which was said to have been under Salazar's command. His tenacity for violence and his vicious ambition were fearsome, but likely what attributed to the cartel's significant growth and dominance over their part of the market. Later that year, Eric Valencia Salazar was arrested after the Mexican army carried out an operation in the Lomas Altas neighborhood of Zapopan, Jalisco. An anonymous tip had been received about armed men in the area, and when the army arrived, they were immediately shot at by cartel members. In the midst of all this, Salazar was taken into custody, which prompted a large-scale shootout between authorities and members of the Jalisco cartel. In retaliation, the Jalisco cartel hijacked 25 civilian vehicles, buses, and trucks, and set them on fire to block off roads in 16 different areas. Citizens were warned to stay inside to avoid the danger, and a majority of the region went into a shutdown for the day. Businesses were forced to close down, schools were canceled, and it went as far as the U.S. consulate in Guadalajara warning the citizens in the metropolitan area to stay alert. Even flights were canceled, but soon the army got hold of the situation and restored peace. A few days later, on March 14, CJNG hung up several banners across Guadalajara metropolitan area, apologizing for the chaos. They maintained that they wanted to keep peace in Jalisco. Salazar was transferred to Mexico City to determine his legal status where he was confirmed as a high-ranking member of the Jalisco cartel. He was at the forefront of a press conference on March 12, where his suspected crimes were aired out to the public. He was then kept under preventative arrest for 40 days, before he was imprisoned at the Altiplano Maximum Security Federal Prison until June 12, 2014, where he was then transferred to Puente Grande Maximum Security Federal Prison. El Chapo himself has escaped from both of these prisons. Altiplano is the one where he used a tunnel that was dug under his cell. Salazar only faced a five-year sentence in prison, but that was all it took for the Jalisco cartel to replace him with Oseguera. Feeling betrayed, he left the Jalisco cartel completely and co-founded a new rival cartel under the name of Nueva Plaza Cartel. This cartel operated primarily in the Guadalajara metropolitan area and was compromised to previous Jalisco cartel members. In 2019, Salazar continued to be a leader of the Nueva Plaza Cartel and had teamed up with the Sinaloa cartel to fight the Jalisco cartel in a heated war where they successfully murdered a leader of the Jalisco hit squad. However, this deadly battle caused the death of Carlos Enrique Sanchez, or better known as El Cholo, who was claimed to be the head of the Nueva Plaza cartel at the time of his passing. Eric was charged on May 3, 2018 by the District of Columbia's U.S. District Court for participating in global narcotics trafficking. Salazar participated in the distribution of 5 kilograms, 11 pounds or more of cocaine from Mexico, and elsewhere for unauthorized importation into the United States from 2003 to 2018. According to court documents under federal judge James E. Boesberg, Salazar's earnings from the offense would be forfeited if he were found guilty, according to the indictment. On August 9, 2018, the sealed indictment against Salazar was made public. The U.S. Departments of State, Justice, and Treasury announced a coordinated law enforcement action against the Jalisco cartel on October 16 and said they were making extensive efforts to find Valencia for his suspected involvement in drug trafficking. Additionally, they disclosed that they would pay up to $5 million in a bounty to the Narcotics Rewards Program to anyone who provided information to U.S. police that resulted in his arrest. Salazar was described as a fugitive by the American administration, who claimed he was most likely hiding in Mexico. Eric Valencia Salazar and two of his colleagues were taken into custody by Mexican Army and National Guard personnel in the Jalisco town of Tapalpa on September 4, 2022. He and his associates were caught with around 1,000 fentanyl pills and 750 grams of methamphetamine at the time of arrest, along with several different weapons. Salazar was granted an amparo after being detained, which prevented a speedy extradition to the U.S., now with him likely facing time in a U.S. prison. It's unclear what the future for the Nueva Plaza cartel will be with another leader gone.